Here we'll be creating a career. I do this by creating a profile. So here I'll select uh, an individual off here. There's not a lot of figures you can select from, but I'm, I'm trying to use somebody different for each of my profiles. So we'll just take this fella here. He'll be my engineer. Most of the time I like to play the conductor anyway and sit in the other seat. But uh, when I create a profile for a free to play type of thing, I'll give it a name and, and call it career. So NEC Northeast Corridor Career and go ahead and confirm that. And once I create this profile, I'll select the Northeast Corridor New York uh, as my experience. And then, of course, I won't use the scenarios or this, the uh, tutorials. Uh, I'll actually first time create a service, and then every time after this, when I get into this career, I will I will choose last played, and that way I'm always continuing on. For this career, I want to select the uh, the area where the freight cars run. Uh, in the New York City area which starts into Fresh Pond so Fresh Pond uh, is actually and I want to start it early so 730 in the morning and here I am coming out of office I'm on foot and we selected the Fresh Pond in order that uh, we can start in Queens and then kind of work our way north so ah, uh, with this service now I can just pick any engine and uh, go ahead and pick up those freight cars I was just looking at engines already started up ready to go um, so we just need to get in there sit down get our engineer to sit down in there and get ready to take off we just have the locomotive so we release the independent brake sometimes called the locomotive brake and uh, Take that neutral, put it into forward, and give it a little, little bit of a throttle. There we go. Open up the windows, get some air in here, and we're starting off the morning, ready to go and do some switching. Now this is the first part of a two-part and it actually took me a few hours to run this uh, scenario and so I decided to divide it up into uh, two, two parts each about 26-27 minutes a piece and, uh, and, and I edited it all along the way because otherwise this would have been two and a half, three hours of straight free to play I'm sorry straight uh, um, let's play type of thing where you where you know you see everything we do but I don't you know I don't feel a need to go on for three hours and act in fact uh, while I was editing this it sucked up my hard drive space and and uh, crashed one of my videos and I had to recover it but as you see here I uh, Got the locomotive up past the first uh, first set of points, and then back with that up on down through the curve, and on over to where these freight cars are. I have to reset the points again on this section uh, of track, and then go, go on over and and get in front of this series of uh, cars. I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the engineer seat and, and uh, being out there as conductor. If you watch my videos in the past, you know that I like to use the HUD as my conductor's radio uh, when I'm out and uh, out, out of the engineer seat. So I don't particularly think that the, uh, the way the train sim world is set up now in order to be on foot you have to get out of the engineer seat to walk around uh, but I kind of have a workaround for that because I want the engineer to continue to control the train so in order to do that I can't be on foot I have to uh, have to float around like we did in the old trim simulator days um, 
But with Train Sim World, uh, the, the way to do that is you can press F3 and it'll take you out and you can have a camera view that floats you around. And But it still allows you to bring up the HUD and, and control uh, the train from, from outside. And, all, and then throw the points, I mean throw the switch, switch points like you see me doing um, and still be outside the train. So that's my workaround. I, I enjoy doing this actually because now I can actually put my camera as if I'm, you know, a third person, uh, being in a third person view, and you know, kind of hook on to the to the back of the train and, and spin around and kind of watch like I was a conductor riding the riding the stoop. So here we are. We're backing down uh, onto this. This uh, series of freight cars, and you notice everything else in the yard is absolutely bare. Not a lot of, of uh, freight out here. Just this line that we're going to be taking on up, up through Queens, over the East um, River, up through the Hellgate Bridge, and uh, and take it into the Bronx. Once we get in the Bronx, we'll park it in the yard there. We'll just couple it up and we'll have to pull it forward and get it up onto the, uh, onto the main track. So we just went underneath that overpass. That overpass is actually for a, a train overpass. So what we're going to do is throw the points to go back around the curve and it'll take us to parallel with the overpass and we'll slip up uh, going up the hill backwards uh, and then we can get on that overpass and go go on over top of it so you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute so the plan is we're going to go up to uh, Oak Point I think it is Oak Point Yard which is once we get over Hellgate Bridge and we get into the Bronx, uh, we will we'll stop at the, at that yard there. It's a freight yard, and and uh, uh, end the end the part one at that point, and uh, we'll pick up part two from the yard as we get another engineer to do the switching. Now, some time back, I did a video called the Train Sim World, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, and I kind of did a review when Heavy Hall came out. And, of course, Train Sim World has a lot of the European trains. And uh, they just put out a, a new uh, passenger line in, in the UK. And then they put out another one over in Germany. Uh, and I've actually enjoyed the passenger line over in the UK. I forgot the name of that one. Uh, but uh, uh, mostly, uh, in fact, I hadn't done any video, any videos with the uh, European trains. All of mine have been the North American videos. So Heavy Hall and now at the Northeast Corridor uh, and New York City are, are just the, the videos I've been focusing on because I, I like the US trains. Eventually, of course, if you, you probably realize now, if you have Train Sim World, that uh, it has not come out as of yet with any um, steam engines. So it's all modern uh, diesel. And we're all kind of hoping and praying that uh, in the future they'll have a new add-on for uh, or downloadable content with a with a steam engine. That would be fantastic. I don't know of any plan for that. I just uh, just like everybody else, kind of hoping to see how that would come about. Because I got to tell you, the the diesel engines and the the train sim world is so fantastic. But the Unreal Engine and the graphics and the amount of detail they're putting in the scenery, 
on these downloadable contents they are beautiful absolutely gorgeous you, you do have to have a a newer uh, computer you know with a good CPU and certainly a, a one of the higher end graphic cards I'm running this on a laptop that's getting fairly old now I think I got four or five years on this laptop and so you're gonna see some stuttering and some uh, frame rate hits but uh, you know nevertheless it's actually over time they after they've optimized the train sim world a few times um, it's not too terrible um, some people will find it unacceptable but it's been getting better optimization wise and but you know I you know I don't want to blame train sim world completely I know some people would but you got to remember I'm running this on an old laptop and on top of that um, you know I'm recording in the background and so I got a lot of things going on at the same time so I'm not you're not seeing the the ideal situation for for running uh for for running train sim world it's a little bit of a push going back up this hill i had to push all these cards there's quite a number of cards i'm not quite sure how many but you know i guess about 20 or so uh, but i'm just guessing that i probably should have counted before i you know uh started running the video but uh, there is a number of cars here and it is a little bit of a push to get the engine it's a you know I don't have a multi-unit I just have the single engine pushing them all up so it's kind of fun and so what I'm doing now is I'm I went made it around the bend they're going up the hill and I'm coming out parallel and into the main line and the overpass we were looking at from down below and once I get the engine past the points, we can switch and start heading straight out north uh, through Queens, heading up towards. Uh, um, I keep thinking Sunnyvale, but it's not Sunnyvale. It's uh, uh, Sunny Something Yard. Ah, sorry about that. Maybe I'll think of it later. But we're not going to actually, we're going to, before we get to the, uh, the main yard in New York, where all of the passenger trains are all deployed out of, is that sunny yard, and, uh, gosh, I keep thinking sunny, though, but. <laughs> it's funny, as I'm, I'm talking here. Uh, a trash uh, train just goes by one of those garbage trains uh, we're, we're actually going to go up past the uh, the waste facility where all these trash uh, cars get filled up at the waste facility it's it's over uh, in the Bronx but it's, it's called the I think it's called the East Harlem waste facility and at that facility all the garbage trucks lines and lines of garbage trucks go into the facility and, and that garbage gets compacted and put into these train cars and then the train comes and takes them out of there uh, we, we won't be going into that that uh, waste facility today we'll drive past it we won't even get to see it though we'll, we'll be kind of off to it same thing with the uh, Sunnyville like I said I don't think it's Sunnyville but I can't remember the proper name but we will fork off and we won't see the Sunnyville yard either where all the passenger cars are. And uh, we'll get a different views here as the train goes by. But so we'll be forking north as I said where if you were to go over towards the passenger yard uh, that's actually over in Brooklyn, I think. Uh, no, it's still Queens. Brooklyn is just a little south. Uh, but once you get through that yard, you go through the tunnel underneath the East River. 
and then you come out into Manhattan and you end up in Penn Station and so that'll be a fun video to do sometime to do the passenger run uh, from Penn Station the passengers if you want to continue on you go underneath the Hudson River and over to New Jersey to the Newark Airport so that's uh, all part of the the uh, Northeast Corridor actually it's uh, quite uh, interesting that the Northeast Corridor runs from like Washington DC all the way up to Boston going through New York and uh, this is only this is only the New York City section of it so don't don't be fooled and think you're gonna get uh, all that uh, all that mileage uh, to run but you do get quite a bit, and there's so much detail. Look at these buildings and in, in going through Brooklyn. It's just gorgeous. It's well done, beautiful, beautifully done. Absolutely dead. It's like uh, apocalyptic times or something. There is no cars. Uh, somebody else did a video on this. I think it was Squirrel. He was talking about it. it felt like zombie land. Or, or the, you know, what's that show? The, 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 the Living Dead or whatever. But... Uh, there is no uh, animated cars. Even Train Simulator had the uh, ha has cars running around the highway. So I don't know what's going on there. Why we don't have any cars to talk about? There's no animation. I mean, when you run the passenger lines, you're going to see passengers walking around the stations and getting in and off the train, and also passengers on the train. But through this whole uh, series of uh, these two-part series I put together, you will see no other uh, animated cars or people walking around. It's a, it, it's not it doesn't feel like New York City. I tell you, I um, I grew up in New Jersey. As a kid, I used to go over to to, to the Bronx and run uh, events, and uh, you know it just. It's such a live place with so much sound, noise. Here's a passenger uh, train going by. Now you will have, here's the great thing about, even though I'm in the kind of a free to play here, uh, doing my own thing with this, with this freight, there are gonna be other uh, trains going through. Uh, like we saw the garbage train go, and now we saw a passenger go. I really don't know how I'm getting away with not having a crash. There's no singles or anything stopping me. And there's all manual switches, which is beautiful from Fresh Point, I'm sorry, from Fresh Pond through Oak Point and then on up to Hunts Point. Uh, there, there is all manual switches so you don't get stuck like we did in the heavy uh, CXX heavy hall where there was places I couldn't go because you couldn't, you couldn't switch the points. Uh, so, yeah, at first I thought the reason why was, you know, I'm on, I'm on the tracks on the right side were, would be free. And then you'd have animated trains going on the, on the left rail. I mean, left to the direction I'm going now. Uh, but that's not really, I don't know that that's the truth. Because it looks like to me that there's occasions I'm going over a single rail. And somehow I'm not running into any, uh, you know, automated trains. or AI trains. So here we are, we're coming out of Queens, about ready to pass over the East River, and we're going through Hellgate Bridge uh, as we speak. Well done. Nice 3D modeling. And I can speak just highly of this. So this, this is uh, beautifully done. The water looks great. Sometimes when you just look at water though, you kind of see repeating textures. And I don't know what to say about that. Um, it's always a problem when you have textures that uh, you know, don't have randomness to them. But this is fabulous, I gotta say, going over the bridge here. And once we get over the bridge, we're entering into uh, this uh, small island before we get into the Bronx. 
Huh, I forgot the name of it. Watson's Island? I can't remember the name of this island. But it's uh, interesting. It has a sporting complex. We're going to get past here in a minute and then we'll. No, I didn't quite get over to it yet. But yeah, it's just wonderful. Everything's elevated. We're not talking about the uh, underground. And so, you know, I thought there was a setting that it was my fault that I need to go back into settings and turn on the animations. <clears throat> and I think I'm thinking about Train Simulator. I'm pretty sure there's a setting in Train Simulator. Yeah, everything's elevated. We're not talking about the subway system. And the only time I think you go underground is when you go under the river into the tunnel. So here's the sporting complex here. <laughs> There's nobody out there playing ball, though. I mean, everything is like, is dead. But I went back and I checked the settings and I got things set as far as I know. And uh, I don't see anything particular to turn on and off animations. So I don't know what's going to happen with Train Sim World. A lot of people complain about it. I don't know what to think because I know, like in Flight Simulator, they have the ability to, to use like a slider switch to adjust how much you want in a way of anima animated ground things like cars and and trains and stuff while you're flying and how many artif artificial um, or I should say AI planes are in the air but you know the the more you put the, those up and the more realistic it is as far as life and animations and cars and planes the impact on performance is just it's just incredibly bad so uh, I think one of the things that maybe Train Sim World is considering right now with all the modeling and the beauty and the detail, if they had any animation going, I don't know what it would do. It would probably choke this thing. Even now, we still, we find Train Sim World that there's something that you, uh, a lot of pe people would notice is when you have another AI train come past you by the other way, you can almost tell before you even see it, you get a, you get a choke. And then you think, oh, I bet you know the train's coming. And sure enough, it'll be coming down the track. And it, you know, chokes out your memory. And if you had, you know, cars and people walking around, I think that's the same thing. The more you have of that, the more difficult it is for the developers to keep the performance optimized. Uh, I, you know, hopefully in the future, this is something that I think they're having to deal with because the technology today has got graphics so beautiful but yet hadn't come to the place where we can have everything. It's almost like we have so much now in the past few years, graphic, uh, you know, with solid state uh, drives, so we're storage, and now we got graphic cards are just getting better and better and more memory on graphics cards. We just about have it all. Just give it some more, few more years and we probably have our cake and eat it too. But right now, it just seems like... Uh, we just can't get life in here and a lot of people complain about it but I don't I don't really blame the developers of Train Sim World just yet on this if you have other games that you claim that have all that stuff um, but this is using the Unreal Engine so you know I don't know here we are in Oak Point uh, Yard and it's a good place for us to conclude I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my feelings concerning um, this new Northeast Corridor and how it's improved over just having the heavy haul. Uh, because the CXS 
the CSX Heavy Haul. Had a lot of things I liked, but it had a lot of things I also talked about as criticism. And I found uh, that most of my criticism has been taken care of. So I want to talk more about that in part two. And that has to do with switching and, and so many other things that uh, I had concerns about. But so far, I mean, there's been trains, uh, AI trains going by, and I made it up here without any issues. Uh, you can see there's other engines. I can jump out of this one and jump into one of the others. Um, at Oak Point is also a place where there's a lot of produce going on. Um, and there's uh, off to the right here, there's a lot of switching in industry, pro, uh, produce industry. Can't quite see it here. I'm not going to be switching into that one. I'm going to be switching into uh, Hunts Point and here comes a passenger car going by now so hopefully you enjoyed this uh, first part and we'll be talking a little bit more about what I like about the the new downloadable content and maybe go into some of the complaints everybody else is having as well so uh, a lot more switching to come up uh, so thanks for watching and it's been a joy. This is Gene Harm. I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, but uh, we'll catch you next time